Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial of Airflow. So in this video, we will learn how to set up Airflow environment using Docker. But first, let's talk about the Airflow problem to get us a motivation of why we have to use Docker. So the first problem is Airflow grows at an overwhelming pace. As you may know, Apache Airflow is an open source project. By taking a look at the Airflow GitHub repo right here, we can see that Airflow has 632 contributors, 98 releases, and more than 5,000 commits. And the latest commit is four hours ago. That means Airflow had new commits every day and constant releases. To manage and maintain different versions of Airflow is already a challenge. Airflow is built to integrate with all databases, system, and cloud environment. So, uh, by looking at the official Airflow page, we can see that beside the MPG Airflow uh, package, it has some extra packages that you can pick and choose to integrate with different cloud environments uh, and different databases. So, in here, you can see that you have uh, Google Cloud Platform, which is the GCP API sub package that you can choose uh, to install to integrate with Google Cloud uh, Platform services. Uh, they have S3, which is the Amazon Web Service, Postgres to integrate with uh, all uh, Postgres database, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Hive, HDFS, and much more. And you can also choose to run your own custom sub-packages as well. So the problem here is to main, uh, managing and maintaining all the dependency uh, changes would be very difficult. Uh, to, uh, for example, today you choose to only need you know one uh, package or one custom package you build and tomorrow you need to add extra and extra and extra so it takes a lot of time to set up and config airflow environment and you know uh, when you work with any installation uh, for any like very difficult environment if you mess up one installation step then you have to clear everything and start over again right and after you spend a lot of time you know set up and configure your environment how do you share uh, your custom development environment to all other developers. So with all that challenges in mind, um, that all those problems gives us a motivation to use uh, Docker to handle. Of course, um, Docker is more powerful and has a lot of more functionality than what I can show you in this tutorial. Uh, but a full explanation of Docker is out of the scope of the Airflow uh, tutorial. Uh, so. I can only give you a brief overview and specific use case here to use Docker uh, to shut up uh, and share our Airflow environment. So uh, a brief overview is Docker is an open platform to developing, uh, shipping, and running application. Docker provides the ability to package and run an application in a loosely isolated environment called a container, and the isolation and security allow you to run many containers simultaneously on a given host, regardless of its operating system like Mac, Windows, PC, Cloud, or data center. So the concept of con container is very similar to a virtual machine in which it creates an isolated uh, environment for you to run your application uh, only inside the container without messing up your global environment. But of course, there are some differences between a container and virtual machine. And here you can see the comparison uh, between those two. So containers are lightweight because you don't need the extra load of a hypervisor, uh, but run directly within the host uh, machine kernel. And your host machine kernel can be anything from Windows to Linux uh, uh, to Mac. You know, your Mac, uh, they use Unix system. So, uh, this means you can run more container on a given hardware combination than if you were using virtual machine. So the benefit of using Docker is that Docker is freeing, freeing us from the task of managing, maintaining all the airflow dependency uh, and deployment. And it's easier uh, for me to share and deploy a different version of airflow environment. Uh, that means regardless of your current operating system, I don't care if you running, um, you have your current operating system is the Mac, Windows, or Linux. As long as you have Docker, you can run all of my workflow in the same Docker environment that I will be sharing with you, and we can all follow the same tutorial, right? So, and I, I can also keep track uh, to GitHub and uh, tags and releases. So, 
For example, later on, if I want to update my airflow version, I can just add attack or release to my GitHub repo, and we can uh, all choose um, which version uh, we want to use. For example, currently we will use, uh, in this tutorial, I'll be using Airflow version 1.10, which is the latest version. Uh, but later on, if uh, we have a next version, which is like 2.0, and you can pick and choose uh, from uh, for whichever you, uh, version you want to use, right? And also ease of deployment from testing uh, to production environment. So the same development environment we're working right here, if you want to deploy it to a uh, production environment, it's uh, an, just a, an easy way to deploy it, right? So uh, I have already created a GitHub repo uh, for us to use. All you need to do is just go to this link right here, fork and clone the below GitHub repo and follow the instruction to uh, set up. Uh, of course, uh, when you go, uh, the, the, it needs a prerequisite, so you have to install Docker, and if you don't have Docker Compose, you have to install it as well, and that's all you need. All you need to do is install Docker, Docker Compose, and then go to the repo, clone the repo, um, and then you you know install the Docker, Docker Compose. That all that the only prerequisite, and then you just follow the instruction to run the service, and you go to this link to see the service. So. Uh, Let's see a quick demo how we do it, right? So I'll go I'll go over step by step of how to do it for you. So this is the link you're gonna go to. Uh, I'm I'm gonna put all the links in the description below. So if you want, just take a look at the description and follow all the links there. So this is a GitHub repo that I created for all of you. And all, all you need to do is just follow the instruction. You clone this repo, so you can either download it or clone it. So in this case, I'll choose to uh, clone it. So right. So we follow the first step here. So I go over my terminal. Uh, this is my current, you know, uh, GitHub uh, directory. All I need to do is git clone, and then the link that I just copy, and I'm cloning it, and then I cd to the uh, repo I right? just um, uh, clone, and then let's go over the next step, which is install the requisite. I already have Docker. Install and running currently running here, and if you want to run the service, all you need to do is Docker compose up. All you need to do is just uh, run this command, Docker compose up minus d. But uh, minus d is just basically you know uh, hiding the log, and you can check the log using Docker compose logs. But uh, since I want to use uh, show you the log of how everything started, uh, how the service started and running, I'll be using Docker Compose app. So let's go over and see. So all, all I need to do is type Docker Compose app and hit run. And immediately it's starting all the container. Or if you haven't built the images, only build everything for you. Uh, and we were seeing, see, all the service running in a minute. Yeah, so you can see like uh, it start a web server here, it start a databases and all the services. And all you need to do, uh, you go to next step, you run the service and you check the local host at port 8080. So, and immediately you have the uh, web server. So let me turn it down. And then you have all the DAC or the workflow immediately. And re like I said, regardless of your operating system, if you have Docker, you can run everything on the same environment I'm currently working on. And you, like I said in a previous uh, video, that you can immediately go in and checking all the data. You can immediately turn it on to see how it's running. And you can see here immediately, you know, send all the tasks to the queue. And you can immediately check the uh, graph view to see how everything is running. This one is currently on queue. Refresh is one currently running. And you can go to each. Uh, task here and view the log. So you, you have everything, right? So let's take a look at our uh, Docker Compose file, right? To, to see how it works. So you have, uh, you a little, uh, you a little bit more about uh, what is under the hood. So let me go over the, my GitHub repo, the one I'll be sharing with you. So you see here, this folder DAX will be storing uh, uh, our DAX. And the only file you need to focus on is this one, docker-compose.yaml. So this is a YAML file, and it is our 
uh, configuration to create the Airflow environment. So by using only this configuration file and sharing with you, and if you have Docker, you can have the same working environments as uh, I do. So under the hood here, uh, what you see that running when we type, you know, Docker compose up, it immediately start and pulling all these services, all the images from the Docker Hub and uh, build it for you. So uh, in here, you, we have two services, right? We, we have a Postgres database that used the uh, Postgres 9.6 and a web server that we using the Docker Airflow image uh, developed by uh, Bucko. So the credit uh, go to Bucko and his amazing work with the Docker Airflow image. So by leveraging, so this is his uh, Docker Airflow image. So by leveraging his image and adding some uh, extra uh, packages here, extra Airflow packages here like TCP API, which is interact with Google Cloud and S3 to interact with Amazon Web Service. And later, if I need more, I just add here more and more packages here and just rebuild my Docker image, right? So all of uh, this Docker images here, you can see that Postgres 9.6 or the Docker Airflow here uh, is all contributed by the Docker community. So we can just, you know, use them, leverage them. Instead, we have to uh, install or custom it ourselves. Uh, an example of this is later on, if you need to develop a full stack application that require a database, a web server, or a lot more services, all you need to do is go to Docker Hub, which is at hub.docker.com and type in, uh, search for any services you want to use and search for the uh, image you want to use, right? And put into a similar like config file that I put here. And there you have it. For example, if you want to use uh, uh, your database as Postgres uh, SQL, you can type in uh, uh, Postgres, right? And search for it. And you have the official Postgres uh, image here with different tag or basically a different version. If you want to use uh, Airflow, you can type Airflow here and you have like Docker, Docker Airflow, which is the one we'll be using in a different version as well. Uh, so it's very amazing. It's like sharing, it's like a GitHub repo, but for a different Docker image. I mean, you can share a different environment uh, with different people, right? We don't have, you don't have to re, uh, you have to install and configure yourself. Just like pulling in, writing, all you need to do is just run a, a text file, very lightweight and share with people. And they just, all you need to type, it's one command. Docker compose up and then they have a the service. So let's go back to our services here. So we have our uh, all our service and lock running. So let me turn it off. Remember after you turn uh, uh, on the service, you have to turn off and by turning off the uh, container, you, you type Docker compose down and all of it is in our, uh, the, uh, all the instruction is in the repo, right? So let's uh, start over again. So you clone the repo, the first step, you clone the repo, you install the packages, which is the uh, Docker and Docker Compose, and then you uh, run the service by typing Docker Compose up minus D. Let's start over again. Docker Compose up minus D, and then immediately starting these two, uh, build your image if you haven't have it, and then you start all the container, and you can list the container by typing Docker container LS, and you see two services currently running right now, which is the web server, and the Postgres, and you go to the link, which is um, localhost 8080, and then you have the services, and you can uh, play around, you can run them, you can schedule them, uh, whatever it, uh, you, you want to do with them. And after you're done playing around with them, all, uh, uh, you can type Docker Compose logs here to see that the log currently running, right? And after you're done to, uh, playing with them, you type Docker Compose down to turn them on. And that's all you need to do. It's very simple, right? So this is the end of our video. In the next video, I'll be talking about uh, Google Cloud Composer, which is another service from Google, which is much easier to set up and scale out your production airflow environment without worrying about uh, using Docker or setting up any infrastructure. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope this video um, is helpful to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more video. Thank you guys and see you in the next video.